Hi, I'm Bill Schultz, and this is Bullets Academy. For the next several weeks, we're gonna be talking about some of the great swimming races uh, in Olympic history, maybe even world history. And one of the races that we're gonna start with today is the men's 800 free relay from the 1984. This was largely considered the greatest race ever in Olympic history until the 2008 men's 400 free relay where Michael Phelps secured his eighth Olympic gold. So today we're gonna to talk about the 1884 relay, and then next week we're gonna talk about the 400 free relay from 2008. I was in LA at the time, I was a spectator, so I have a lot of love for this race. It was one of the most exciting races I've ever seen. I still get goosebumps thinking about it today, for, oh, you know, nearly 34 years later. So, um, but let's set the stage a little bit. It's 1984, it's the Americans versus the West Germans. The West Germans, remember, uh, there was still an East and a West Germany, East and West Berlin. The Cold War was still in full force and um, uh, the, the Berlin Wall had not come down yet. So the West Germans with some great swimmers and they were led by Mikhail Gross. He was the Michael Phelps in the 80s. He was an amazing swimmer, held world records in the 100 free, 200 free, 400 free, 800 freestyle, the 100 butterfly and the 200 butterfly. So the similarities with him and Phelps are pretty pretty amazing. Um, Mikhail Groyos, obviously the night before, had won the Olympic gold medal and set the world record in the 200 free. He's on the relay and the bronze medalist are on the German, is on the German relay. On the American side, you've got um, Mike Heath, who's gonna be leading off. He's the Olympic silver medalist. And the key to this race is um, uh, how will the United States set their team up for the best success against a relay this strong? In the morning, the United States uh, earned the number one spot by breaking the Ameri by breaking the world record uh, with uh, a 7:18, I believe they went in the morning. So now here we come at night. The United States have put two fresh swimmers on, including Heath, who did not swim in the morning, and Michael Gross is swimming for the Germans, who also Michael did not swim. Mikhail did not swim in the morning. So the United States is in lane four. The West Germans are in lane five, and the United States strategy is pretty simple. Let's build an insurmountable lead so that when Bruce Hayes hits the water and from the United States, and he needs about a two to three, two, two and a half second buffer if he's going to beat Mikhail Gross, the world record holder. So that's the strategy heading into the race. Mike Heath leads off. And one of the things, before I get into the race, one thing that I think is really interesting about the race is we're going to talk about some of the splits and some of the how some of these swimmers race. Because it's the, I believe the 200 races, the 200 free, but all the 200 races are the most difficult races in swimming. The 500, the 400 free is getting into that same ballpark because you got to go fast in the race. But if you go too fast, you're going to have a lot of problems at the end of the race. And I've always told swimmers over the over the years, you can't win the 200 free in the first 50, but you can lose it in the first 50. If you go out too fast, you're gonna really, really struggle. We're gonna see where a couple swimmers did that in this race, um, and uh, maybe even one surprising swimmer that you wouldn't expect to swim the race that way. So without any further ado, we're gonna start the race off again. We have Mike, Mike Heath uh, um, um, swimming in uh, lane four for the United States, the silver medalist. And Mike Heath gets off to a great start. And again, this is in Los Angeles. This is an American crowd, 15,000 people on hand, and the vast majority of them are Americans, and the cheering is intense. Everybody knows this is the race that everybody's been waiting to see. Uh, also in this Olympics, we had um, Carrie Steinseifer and Nancy Hawks had two American women tied for first place in the 100 free. It never happened before in Olympics where you had a tie for first place. Um, there's also an epic race between the Americans and Australians in the 400 free relay anchored by Rowdy Gaines, who everybody knows now if you've ever watched an Olympic broadcast. But this was the race. This was the one. This was, you know, the, the, the two great swimming powers and Michael Gross, the number one swimmer in the world, going toe to toe. So like I said, Mike Heath dives in, swims a brilliant race. He was 149 in prelims, swims a, or I'm sorry, 149 the night before when he got the silver medal. He goes 148. And what's really impressive is the way he swam the race. Mike Heath goes out in a, sorry, looking at my splits here, 53.4 in the first 100, comes back in a 55.2. So his two splits are less than two seconds apart. Very controlled race and had a lot of speed coming into the final. He turns the race over to David Larson. Now, right now, the crowd is chanting, USA, USA. They are going crazy right now because they know this is an unbelievable split for, for Mike to turn over to uh, Larson. And man, it's starting to look good early on. Larson, hyped by the crowd, pumped up, 
goes out like a maniac and he is out first 50 and a 51.5. That is two seconds faster than the Olympic silver medalist of Mike Heath. And so he's out super fast and it really showed. He built a three second lead at the 300 mark. And then the second 50, he goes out in 51, comes back in a 57. He's dying, he's hurt, and he's trying to finish this race, but he is really on the struggle bus right now. And the, and the, East, and the West Germans come back, close the gap back. Uh, Larson did build a little bit, about maybe a tenth of a second, and now he turns over the race to Jeff Flo. And so Jeff Flo, again, the crowd is going crazy. These are California guys, man. These guys grew up in California. They've lived in California. They're swimming in their home, in their home state. And these guys are pumped up. Jeff Flo, again, out in a 50. Uh, Jeff Flo goes up in 52-0. And again, opens up a 2.8 second lead. He is blowing it out of the water. The crowd is going crazy. USA, USA, they're chanting. Everybody's on their feet. And then the second 100, he comes back in a 57, also five seconds slower. He too is on the struggle bus, but he hangs in there and he turns over the lead to uh, Bruce Hayes, but it's only 1.7 seconds. Everybody in the building's thinking, this is not gonna be enough. Mikhail Gross, he is six feet, seven inches tall, and his wingspan is seven feet. It is massive. He's got these super long arms and he is just chewing up water like it's his job. They hit so 1.7 second lead for Bruce Hayes. Bruce Hayes swims up very controlled. Probably the smartest racer, certainly every bit as smart as, as Mike as uh, Mike Heath's uh, first first 200. And he swims a very, very controlled race. He goes out in 25.4. Just to give you some perspective, uh, Larson went out in 24.5. And so um, he goes out very controlled, he goes 25.4, and he goes a 27.9 and a 28.2. So he's got some good splits going on right there. He's very consistent. Mikhail Gross goes out in 24.2. He, he is a German, he is proud. This is a country that's not used to winning a, a relays at the Olympics and they can take down the Americans. This is David and Goliath's time and Mikhail Gross gets after it. He goes out in a blistering 24.2. He wants to beat the Americans on their home soil. He wants to silence 15,000 people. But Bruce Hayes, Swims the first 50 controlled, even though he's been listening to that USA, USA chant for five minutes straight. And he, but he stays calm, cool, and collected. Mikhail Gross swims the first 50 unbelievably fast. Then it's Mikhail Gross's turn to start to get on the struggle bus a little bit. Mikhail Gross swims his second 50 in a 27.5. Remember, he's the world record holder. Um, uh, Bruce Hayes is 27.9. So even though Mikhail, Mikhail Gross is starting to struggle a bit as we get into the third 50, he's still extending his lead. And he's actually, you know, pulled ahead a little bit. The third 50 looks like Michael, Mikhail Gross is in control. He doesn't seem to be phased by any by, by how fast he went out on the first 50, but it's the end of the third 50 where you really start to see things happen differently. And so, but but Mikhail Gross goes 27.9 on that third 50. Even though Hayes goes a 28.2 and he still opened up the lead, 27.9 is a troubling split if you're a German, if you're a fan of the West Germans. Then something unbelievable. So uh, uh, Mikhail Gross comes off that last wall and he is six feet, seven inches tall. This guy is a monster. And he's seven, he's got, he's got a wingspan of seven feet. He, his feet leaves the wall, he's almost to the flags. And he comes up and takes a breath four meters off the wall. He has uh, feet are barely off the wall. He comes up, he's sucking air right now. He, he needs air really bad. And then Hayes still behind him a little bit. But then what happens is Hayes starts to pick up his tempo. He picks it up, he picks it up. And all of a sudden with about 25 meters to go, they're starting to inch closer and closer. And you can see the pictures. Oh, by the way, these pictures are from 1984. That's why they're blurry, that's why they're grainy. When you watch the video, click on the link below for the video, you're gonna see a really grainy video. This was way before high def. For all you little kids who grew up in 4K, this is what we grew up with. So just kind of bear with us for a moment here. The 2008 video will probably be better. But you can see in the video that, um, Two things, one, one, Bruce Hayes has definitely picked up his tempo. 
His hands are moving faster. He's going through the water with a little bit more ease. And Gross is definitely uh, struggling a little bit. And uh, Gross, they both move right to the lane on, and they are eyeball to eyeball, man. They are looking at each other, watching each other the entire stroke for stroke. And Hayes is moving up. He's moving up. and uh, But Hayes still isn't quite there. They come under the flags, and um, Hayes still, now you can see, Hayes' head is in front of Gross. But you remember, Gross's wingspan is seven feet, so Hayes has to be even further ahead to get his hand on the wall first. And in an unbelievable last 50, Bruce Hayes touches the wall first, hundreds of a second ahead of the Germans. They both go, both teams go at two, go 7.15. The previous world record set in the morning was seven minutes and 18 seconds. An unbelievable swim. But the most amazing thing is the last 50s of each swimmer. Bruce Hayes split 25-4, 27-9, 28-2, 26-8. He was a second and a half faster on that last 50. He had controlled himself, and you could probably argue he might have been a little bit faster in the middle 100, but he was saving himself for that last 50. He was staying with Gross. Gross, on the other hand, goes 24, 27, 27, 27. Gross also went faster on the last 50 than he did on the previous two. But still, for a world record holder of that caliber to go out in a 24 and not being able to hold 26s, you know, if he had, you know, I, I argue that if Gross would have gone out a little bit slower, he might have had a little bit more at the end. Although you can say the same things for Larson and Float. Had they gone all of it slower, it's, 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 it's a safe argument that they would have been faster later on in the race. But that's the way that even in the best environments, in Olympic swimming, where everything is on the line and you're swimming for the flag and you're the top swimmers in the world, it's still you can overswim or let your emotions get a, get a hold of you. We see it all the time in youth swimming and things like that. But um, so an unbelievable race, not a perfect race by any stretch of imagination, but an unbelievable race. And so the Americans end up touching first. They swept the relays in that, uh, that year. And um, for swimmers, a lot of these Americans who didn't get to swim in the 1980 Olympics, uh, Rowdy Gaines, um, uh, um, Pablo Morales, and, and a host of others uh, the, on the women's side. I mean, I mean, uh, just the whole team. Uh, most of these swimmers would have had qualified also to swim in the 1980 games, not all of them but many of them. And so for them to be able to come back and have a dominating Olympics the way they did, really, I think it was special. And I think that race was really the, the epitome of a phenomenal Olympics uh, for, the, for the Americans on their home soil and the excitement. So next week, we're gonna look at the 400 free relay from the 2008 Olympics. When you watch this relay, you'll notice that Rowdy Gaines is not calling the race because he's in this meet. He's actually swimming in the meet, so he didn't start covering races till years later. So, um, uh, so anyway, so that so you're not going to hear Rowdy Gaines if you're expecting that. Um, and certainly, a lot of us over the last 20 years have heard Rowdy Gaines call a lot of races. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys thank your coaches. Uh, the Bullet coaches have done an amazing job putting together a lot of content, trying to put some normalcy into this crazy world that we're in right now. So be sure to thank your coaches. They're working really, really hard and doing a phenomenal job to try to keep you guys involved in swimming and, and help you in any way we can. So we're going to get through this whole thing. We're going to get this bug out of us and then uh, hopefully get back in the water soon in the next month. And uh, in the meantime, I'm Bill Shaws. This is Bullets Academy. Hope you enjoyed this content. We're going to come back next week with some more.